Hello and welcome along to another episode and a start of the third season from this FM22 One Club story with Hemel Hempstead Town with me, Daniel. It's part 18 of the Tudor Times today and we are back for a transfer special. And my word, as the title gives away, it has been tough, it's been frustrating and it's been a little bit last minute. I'm starting to feel like I'm in the head coach and playing the role of the director of football at the minute. But alas, we're back for the first game of the season. We have just about pieced together a squad. It's not exactly what I was looking for, and I don't think it's probably quite the answer yet. But either way, we've got to make it work. And while it might be a slow start to the season, for reasons we'll discover in a minute, I'm optimistic that in the long term, it might not be too bad. So if you're looking forward to finding out what we've done, we'll also try and get through our first game away at Eastley, a side that was also just outside the playoff mix like us last year. Please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from Two Long Term Stories. We're back on the normal schedule now, so this one is every two days at 3.30 with the head coach on the days in between. And of course, if you haven't seen it yet, please do give the FM22 mobile series a try. It started earlier this morning, the link's in the eye above, as well as all the other playlists and the Twitch channel too. Regular live streams over there, I'm having a wonderful time. Thank you so much for your incredible support. However, we do have to reflect pretty honestly on this transfer window and say it's been frustrating. If I was my director of football, I'd be disappointed with what he's achieved. And going into the new season, I'm not entirely confident that we're actually in much better a position than last year. And given the fact that so many of the deals came late in the window or late in the summer, we are in a position where I don't think we're going to hit the ground running. So let me start by showing you the players that left the club and then we'll take a look at the ones that have come in. But the big problem is that we haven't been able to do what we set out in our season review last time. So in terms of the released players, only one player actually left at the end of his contract because we'd got out a lot of the deadwood the first summer. But... Chris Paul's the only one who was released, and he was a good servant for us. He scored a crucial goal at the start of the Easter break last year, but he just wasn't quite good enough for National League level. It was proved most of the times he played, and I'm afraid we have to be ruthless in this industry, or we're going to get stuck in the National League for a very long time, because it's a tough league, and we're semi-pro against largely professional teams. So Chris Paul, the one player released. If we go back to last season, so you can see the transfers at the end of the year, Fraser Shaw... Our backup left back from last year was sold to Halifax. So two fullbacks that have left the club. Shaw has been pushing his way out for six months. I think he found it hard. He was first choice the first year. Second year, Matthew Carson came in and basically wiped the floor with him. I just want to go back again, actually. He might have been my first signing. Let me have a look. He was because the only other one was a youth coach who we got in on a playing contract to reduce the wage. He was our first ever first team signing. And Fraser Shaw... To be fair, he's going to hold a special place in our hearts because those three were crucial last season and he stuck it out for an extra year. So Fraser Shaw did a brilliant job, but it was the right time and he's gone on to Halifax. So I think are still in this league. They are. So he's getting a professional contract and I'm sure he's deserved it. On to this season though, we've had a couple more leave the club. So all of the lone players went out, but two more have left the club as well. I wasn't really that pleased about Samir Carruthers going, but he wouldn't accept a low enough wage and he was out of contract. So after getting to that situation last year, the second time it didn't quite work out. The positives, he's turned 30, he's getting a massive pay upgrade for himself and going to Ireland. So we can't begrudge him the move, but it's just unfortunate we couldn't keep him because another player didn't really, again, you're seeing a pattern, aren't you? These are players that had a brilliant influence in the National League South didn't quite make the same impact in the National League. So no goals or assists last season for Carruthers. The year before, he had eight goal contributions in the league, 12 overall. So it does show that he wasn't quite at the level, but he did a great job for us. He was a good experienced pro in the squad and will always be very grateful for what he did for us. However, he wasn't the only one to go. Dejon Noel Williams didn't really get a look in last year. Didn't have much of a look in the first season, in fairness. He's gone to Castellon in Spain. He has played out there before. He came to us. He scored four goals in the first season. To be fair, they were crucial ones. He was good off the bench. He gave us a little bit of an outlet and a chance to rest at end day. And as a result, he was key to our promotion, despite not being a first teamer. However, as you can see, there are a lot of players coming in. And a lot more this year on permanent deals. However, I have had to take a few gambles. And we have got a few positions where we're struggling a little bit. And I think the biggest shift you can see from last year 
We had loads of young players wrapped up and ready to join on the 1st of July. This season, all of it was getting done last minute. It's all happened in the last four weeks. Most of it in the last two or three. And I'm not really convinced that we've upgraded quite as we liked. We've certainly not got the upgrades I thought we were going to get. And in a way, I've not actually been able to upgrade a couple of positions. I've had to go for slightly different styles. And I think you'll notice a theme as we go through the players coming in here. So let's start with probably the only one this summer that's come in as a result of the trial from the youth players leaving the top tier clubs. Last year, we had the likes of Harry Brook, Oliver Turner. I think there were four or five, Harbottle and Senga. Here, Bandera was the only one. He was released from Arsenal. Not really quite the ability I would expect from a player who's three and a half star ability, now 19, a Portuguese under 21 international. But he's joined us for 200 quid a week, three and a half star ability, and I really think he's got the ability to be a great player for us in the future. For now, he's probably going to be third or fourth choice. He can cover the holding role too, which is great with Oshien going on international duty. But at the moment, I don't think he's first team ready. But I think he was too good to turn down for the price. And another player, if he does come good, that we might be able to make a profit on in a transfer window. The second one was just a backup for the squad. Dylan Barkers became available. It was too good a deal not to do. A proper backup holding midfielder designated in the squad. He's decent on the ball, so he can distribute as well. And although he's not going to play a huge amount of games, I feel like he's got what it takes to be part of our squad. And another thing that I've looked at in Barkers and a lot of the signings since the jump in reach and the height. We have been so caught out by set pieces last year. We knew it in the National League South and we got away with it because we were too good from open play, from crosses, whatever it might be. Whereas in the National League, it did harm us a bit, particularly when we were going on those poor runs to not be able to nick cheap goals. We got so many games where we didn't score. We were the fourth lowest scorers in the league. We were the lowest scorers in the league bar one side from set pieces. And that can't happen. So Dylan Barkers at six foot four, 17 jumping reach, good in the air. And to be honest, I'm tempted to retrain him as centre half because he looks a little bit like Capequa. But we'll think about that later. For now, we've got another good solid holding midfielder. And then we had to replace the right back. Chris Paul had left the club. Simpson, not quite good enough and still throwing his toys out the pram. So he might yet leave the club entirely. But I took that opportunity again to get a taller, more imposing player at the back post. Simpson was only five foot seven, and Paul, as much as he couldn't cope at National League level, was key in the south because he was six foot and he was good in the air. He could cover centre half. Elliot Hewitt, much closer to the same. Of course, a former under-21 international for Wales, has played for Ipswich and Grimsby in the Football League, till quite recently, to be fair. Notts County he played for for a number of years. He's a versatile player, which is great for the squad. He's 29, so one of the few that adds a little bit more experience. And while he isn't a big upgrade in terms of ability, I don't feel we needed that. We've got someone who can cross the ball a bit better, is very similar defensively, and although he isn't any quicker, he's got a better natural fitness and stamina, he's got a good personality, which is fairly professional. He likes to cross the ball early, he's six foot one, and he can jump. And that is something that is going to be a theme throughout this. So we might be playing a little bit more direct than normal, maybe from set pieces, maybe trying to take advantage of crosses into the box. And Elliot Hewitt, man who can play in various roles, but for now, will be our first choice right back to start the season. And I don't expect those physicals to decline too much, given the fact he's still in his 20s. What you will notice after this, though, and what we certainly noticed when looking at our two players for each position, is that our big plan for the summer in yesterday's season review was we had to improve the front three. We were one of the lowest scorers in the league, and it's the only thing that stopped us getting in the playoffs. However, it was really hard to find targets. We were trying to get upgrades of a like-for-like -like replacement for Sedende. The wingers was basically a minefield. So in the end, I went for a different option. So we've got two different types of striker we can play in the squad, and maybe even a justification for a front two if we're chasing some games. So on loan from QPR, Hamzad Kargbo comes in. We're contributing 450 quid a week. And you'll notice the theme again. Six foot six, 18 jump in reach. Still fairly quick, it has to be said at this level. A good finisher. A type of striker that can play in behind as Sedende has. Maybe not the best off the ball. Maybe not quite as agile. But a six foot six, he's still fairly good physically. And he's got all the other attributes too. So I'm looking at this now and thinking, we've got to take advantage. Cargbo and Sedende are basically like-for-like like up front. Sedende's rated slightly better. 
but I'm not sure which of the routes we're going to go down. There were a lot of games last season where Sedende didn't score or he played poorly and we didn't really have a solution off the bench, particularly once Demario Brown Sterling's early season form dried up. And I just feel like this guy's a great alternative, potentially a great partner and also a good utility man to have as a backup because he can cover centre half for the last few minutes of a game if we need to chuck someone back. And my word, he should be able to help in both boxes from set pieces. So Cargbo, no senior appearances, but I think he might be a crucial sign into the way we want to play. The rest of the front three, though, we've not improved to the extent we'd like. And we also struggled to fill the other squad voids at the back. So Brandon Brian War was our next signing, came in on the same day. He's a centre half at 18 years of age, three star ability, can also cover at right back and left back. Not the most strong. But he is pretty tall, he's good in the air, he's got a good jumping reach again. Gives us a lot of options. And I'm sure he'll play a few games at fullback too. But I'm thinking later in the season, and I've got to be honest here, because we've really struggled to get wingers in. I'm thinking about training a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2, whichever way you want to look at it. Get some wing backs in, which the likes of Hewitt, the likes of Carson will certainly be able to do. And then maybe giving up the wingers entirely. Getting the two players up front. They're both pretty physically imposing. Even Sedende's good in the air and nearly six foot. And maybe just try and work a bit more central. I don't know if it'll work out. But I feel like this season we've got to have a plan B. Because that's what we didn't have last season. If it didn't work out we just sort of accepted a nil-nil or a one all. This season we've got to have a second option to try and win games. And I feel the combination of this guy and the six foot six striker means we might have an opportunity to do that. But let me know what you think if I'm right on that front, or maybe I'm being a little bit optimistic. The next signing, an experienced player. I talked about it when we came up against him in the first season of this save. A player I've saved the penalty from in real life, Janae Mead, former Arsenal Champions League man once. Played all over Europe and the world. Fair play to him, he's had a good career. Current Monza at International. Another one of those who is a backup left back on non-contract terms, so we don't have to pay him unless he plays but can play wing back too, which became crucial when we were looking through the summer. And not only can he play left wing back, he can play all right at right wing back too. He's really decent technically, as you'd expect from an Arsenal Academy graduate. He's not bad mentally, he's still solid physically at 30 years of age. And I know he's starting to decline a little bit, but I feel for this season, once he gets fit, he'll be a really solid squad player for us. The problem is, going forward in our current tactic, I don't think we are. And I think that's why in the long term we're going to have to change. And it's sort of inspired the two deals we've done here. The first though is Paolo Aguas. He comes in on loan from Mansfield. And I'll apologise in advance for the pronunciation. Look at where he can play. I've taken care of left wing back again. With someone who can go forward and cross the ball. I've taken care of centre midfield cover. It's a little bit like Ellis Watts but can play at left back as well. And I just couldn't turn him down. He's three-star ability. Technically, he's our best left winger at the club at the moment, with Dobson slightly declining. But I look at him and I think, if we go to the wing-back system, he'll still have a place in the squad. If we stick with wingers, he'll be first choice. And even if all of that fails, he can cover for us in centre mid. He's got a good long shot. He's good crossing the ball. And he's fairly good physically too. Excellent natural fitness, which is always important for utility men at National League level. But really happy with him. No contribution to the wages. And I'm pretty sure he'll play a fair bit of football. Unlike some of the others we've had in, he has got a season of football under his belt too. Played 19 senior games for Gateshead in the first season. Alright, he didn't get any contribution last year, but did play a few non-competitive games. And for this season, I think he's going to be a really invaluable asset to the squad. Partly because of his quality, but mainly because of where he can play. And then the final one... Again, we had two options that weren't going to hugely improve the squad, but were maybe going to be slight upgrades. Now, Michael Fernandes was the cheaper of the two wage-wise by a long way, and I didn't want to break our regular budget because it's still important to me to run financially soundly, but he can also play up front and pretty decently too. So Michael Fernandes is our three-star ability right winger, a little bit older at 24 and a little bit of a different approach. Came out of a youth academy, but has played at Farnborough for the last two and a half years. And he's done really well. He went up to the National League South last year after they got promoted in the first season. He scored six goals. He got an assist, five player of the match awards and an average rating of over seven. He's someone who deserves a chance to step up to the National League. And if our scouts can start to find players like that and our director of football can highlight them, players that are playing in the division below that can step up from other semi-pro clubs on cheap wages, 
then we might have a transfer strategy on our hands because it can't all be about relying on 18 year olds to come out of Premier League academies. We've seen this year, most of them are going to reject us for professional clubs and some years you're not going to get loads of great ones. So we can't always be reliant on that. Fernandes can also play naturally off the left as well if we want to play someone inside. I don't really like that he cuts inside from the right wing, but we can work on that. He is 5 foot 10, so at the back stick, won't be the shortest option in the world to get onto the end of things. And he's also a decent finisher if we do go for the front two. He can play as a backup option to Sedende there, but he can also play as a first choice right winger. And with Marsh Brown, who couldn't really stay fit and consistent last year, I'd imagine they're going to end up sort of rotating throughout the season. But if Fernandez adapts to the higher level like he did last year with Fafambra, we're going to have one hell of a season with him. A really good signing. So on the face of it, for the tactic we've been playing, I'm not really thrilled about the changes. I don't think we're going to have a wonderful season as a result. However, I do see the potential for a move to the back three long term and maybe then fireworks. We'll wait and see which it happens to be this year. Of course, because a lot have joined late, we've not got the best fitness across the squad, especially across the team expected to be the first 11 this year. The team cohesion's dropped very slightly and the tactical familiarity is not great. I know the squad's not picked at the moment, but... It's been better, I can assure you of that. We very quickly look at a season preview and what all that's done to where we're expected to finish. You can see that it's not really changed from last year. And that's because we haven't had any major upgrades. We've mainly improved the backup squad and taken a few little punts up front. If they work out, we might go from 8th to 7th or 6th. If they don't, we probably will be mid-table again. That's just life. There's still massive hitters in the league and it's not helped by the fact that both Newport County and Swindon have come down. Big Money, Ebbsfleet and Fylde have come up from the divisions below and even Gateshead have got experience at this level as have Haven and Waterlooville. So we've not really got as weak a league I think as last year overall but maybe not quite so many massive runaway sides at the top because Notts County were just ridiculous. The media aren't expecting much. I'm not expecting a huge amount. And I don't really know what my best tactic is going into the first day of the season. There are some problems, but let's go and get our team picked for the first day of the season. We will stick with a 4-3-3 for this one. And hopefully, despite some unfit players, we'll be able to start the season with a positive result at Eastleigh. Okay, and here is the squad we've gone for. You can see the fitness, the pre-season training, it's been all over the place. We've had little knocks for the first time at Hemel, ironically after talking about the medical centre. And we've been trying to test trialists, so it has harmed the first team a little bit. As a result, and the fact that that's combined with a difficult start, I think we are going to struggle for the first few weeks. However, we've made some slight tactical tweaks and we've tried to keep the familiarity in this 11 where possible. So the only new faces in the team for the first competitive game are Hewitt at right back, which is essential. And then on the left wing is Paolo Aguas. We have got a couple in Bandera, Fernandez, and Cargbo on the bench. And if we're doing well, they can make their debuts today. But our 11 in full for now is Gregory as the sweeper keeper, Hewitt and Carson the fullbacks with Capequa and Harbottle at centre half. Just a quick notice as well Capequa, another year contract. He's here for two more seasons now. Ochieng in the holding role with Mantam and Turner in midfield. I've changed Turner to a centre midfield role on attack. It's a debate we've been having for a number of weeks in live streams. None of us ever use a centre midfielder and none of us really have a good reason for it. So I'm going to give it a go. The playmaker role doesn't really work the way we're playing at the minute. So let's get a centre midfielder on attack and see if him and Mantum can both get support in the crosses. Because if Sedende loses the first one, have we got players then on the edge of the box? So those two are going to be combined in those roles. Marsh Brown will stay on the right for now with Aguas on the left. And then Victor Sedende up front. Loads of new attacking players on the bench. Fingers crossed, without match fitness, we can somehow sneak a victory. And some familiar names in the Eastleigh team as well. The likes of Tom Whelan and Chris Bush, experienced players at this level. Aaron Martin, a good one too. We've got the likes of Ben House and Jake Heskeff. They're a quality side. They're a good footballing team too. So this is going to be a difficult challenge. We're going to pump the fists. We're going to tell them to show the world how good they are. And hopefully, they're going to last physically for 90 minutes. But it's going to be wholesale changes on Tuesday night. I know that already. And early doors, we've got to throw on the right-hand side. I'm sticking with the balance mentality today. One, because a lot of these faces are new. I don't really know how good they are. Although, Aguas is in at the back stick. That's an instant impact. Sam Mantum to the byline, delivers to the back post. And replacing tall man for fairly tall man on the left wing has certainly worked when it comes to crosses. But really, we're playing a good side today. I don't know 
what to expect. So we'll stick balanced and we'll push it throughout the season. As Sedende goes wide to Marsh Brown. We're immediately getting on the front foot. Kelly tries to bring him down, but Marsh Brown gets away. Manton releases him again. Crosses to Aguas. Almost the perfect debut. Hits the bar. It could have been a brace in eight minutes, but it's not to be. Hemel Hempstead one up, and so far, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? As it's a free, free kick into the box. Hits the crossbar from Chris Bush. The rebound is in. I was almost stunned by the fact that he was unmarked. And what is really annoying, I mean, that's harsh. The text commentary saying Gregory was beaten too easily at his near post. He thundered it in as Mansum's got a free kick towards the back stick for Marsh Brown. Hits the post himself now. What I was going to say is it's so difficult that we've been beaten from a set piece or the first one we faced when we worked so hard to get in a taller side, get them set up right. But that's the sort of thing that happens when you haven't had a full pre-season. These lads have been together a week, a week and a half. They don't quite know that shape yet. And as a semi-pro side, they will have had, what, four, five training sessions? We can't expect them to be brilliant from that. It's been a very even game at the break, which probably suggests we are going to be in and around the same position again. I'd probably take that, given the summer we've had. But it would be nice if we can go and nick a winner here. Again, though, from open play, not a massive goal threat. Oliver Turner playing a bit better in that centre midfield role, which is a good sign for the rest of the season. But there are starting to creep in a few tired legs now. We'll go and see what formation Eastley are playing. They've gone flat 4-4-2. And with 20 to go, we've got to throw it right back with Hewitt. He gives it to Marsh Brown. Back to Mantum. To Hewitt again. Delivery to the back post to Victor Sedende. Just over the bar. It was a great opportunity. And Hewitt's delivery has been sublime out there. But we are going to have to make substitutions now. I'm going to leave Agras on the left wing. Because we can start Dobson in the week if need be. But I'm going to take off Marsh Brown for Fernandez. I'm going to give Cargbo his first go. Do I want him advanced forward or target, man? Let's go on to advanced forward because he can still get the headers in the box. Then we could change the fullbacks. We could do centre mid. I think we're going to do that. We're going to go Harry Brook on for Turner. It's not the right game to try and give Bandera a debut. So advanced playmaker on attack. Back to last season for Sam Mantum. Can we deliver with 16 minutes left? Or are we inevitably going to get outdone physically? Which you'd expect against a professional side. Well, we're heading towards stoppage time. It's quiet. And to be honest, it's not a bad start to the season. Eastleigh were right behind us last year, chasing the playoff places all the way. And that's a pretty good effort. It was an even game. We got an early goal. We had a bit more of a threat from crosses. And it was just a set piece that undone us. And really, it's not normally our defensive work that does. Kopetka continues to be the best player on the pitch. But let's have a look at the schedule for when we'll be back. Because that was a promising start. Well, looking at our start to the season, we're going to be in trouble. Because it is horrendous. Dagenham won the opening game of the season. Wrexham were high up in the playoff places last year. Newport down from League 2. Hartlepool massively improved when they got a new manager in. Chesterfield were right up in the playoffs. Carlisle were up in the playoffs. And in Maidenhead were the next best semi-pro team. So, do you know what? Let's show the last two of the tough games. Chesterfield and Carlisle start of September. Hopefully no EFL clubs come sniffing around Kopecko. Now he's got a new deal. But a promising start to the season. And if we're anywhere near mid-table or above after seven games, we're going to have a good season. Because while these players are bedding in, it's a very difficult start. If they can get settled by that point, when we face the slightly easier fixtures on paper... They're going to be really good because they're going to be gelled. They're going to be able to create chances. And hopefully they'll be trained in that secondary tactic too. So if you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy our summer work and the first game of the season at Eastleigh, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think of the transfer business. What tactic you think we should eventually end up playing. I'm edging towards the back three once it gets going. But for now, I just want to keep familiarity until we can get those players bedded in and fit playing in reserve and youth games. If you want to stay up to date and find out how the season goes, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Daily FM22 content from two long-term stories at 3.30 each day. Tomorrow, we'll be back with the head coach at half three. And in the day after, these two big National League games with Hemel. There's also this week Daily FM22 mobile content. You can find the first episode earlier today up in the eye above. But a massive thank you for watching. Your continued support as always. It is greatly appreciated. It's season three. It's going to be a tough one. I'll see you next time to find out if we can survive this start.